Hello everybody, my name is Marco and I'm here today to show you how the 9824 Leverless works. So we're going to take a look of the old machine and the function first. Uh, rain clay machine capable to do wheels up to 24 inches out of the box. Uh, two speed motor, swing arm, Leverless. You can see we have three pedals, you can notice up front here. We have the rotation which is the first one, two speed rotation. We have maximum control at any time. We have the jaws with this pedal will control the jaws. The third cylinder, as you can see, all four of them open, two cylinders. These can also be adjusted to accommodate larger wheels. The third pedal is our bead breaker shelf. And here we control bead breaking procedure. As I said before, this is a swing arm machine, so we actually have a swing arm. Most of you are familiar with this system. Uh, but on this machine, uh, we utilize a leverless system. So as you can see from this, we can use that. This will be your pry bar during the whole procedure. So this swing arm can actually be adjusted at the height that we need, locked in place. And on top of that, with the second switch, we can even lock the swing movement, so the arm will stay in this position and not come in contact with the wheel. On the other side, we have a PPT or bead pressing tool. This arm will assist you big times when we're working on low profile or run flats. Here I just wanted to show you in detail how the two-speed turntable works, especially the jaws. You can see our jaw starts around 10 inches diameter, so very small wheel. With the pedal that I've shown you before, we can extend these jaws with just one simple movement all the way up to 20. On top of that, these are extendable, so as you can see, we have a knob on this side. This one will extend an extra 2 inches on this side. We are going to do the same at the opposite. And now we'll be able to clamp 24 inch diameter wheel from the outside. Also the bead breaker has different setting and adjustment for different type of wheel. You can see we have our pads. This is adjustable with this lever being actually taken out. Uh, right now we can work on very thin wheels. This shovel also can work on very wide wheel. Let's say this space is not enough for an off-road or a mudder tire. By releasing this pin, the old shovel comes out and now we will have a wider clearance. We're going to start changing this tire, so we're going to start with this wheel. As you know, first step is breaking the bead. Make sure you release the pressure from the tire. Never break a bead when it's fully inflated. Now we can start here. Of course, it's always a good thing if you have TPMS sensor not to step on the sensor with the shovel. With the pedal on the side, you can start breaking the bead. Uh, it's always a great thing to use some lube, even if it's an old tire that you're getting rid of, um, it will make it easier on the operator and on the machine. Loop. We usually hit two, three spots on the wheel. We are going to do the same on the other side. After the tire side wall is completely detached from the wheel, we can proceed and lock it on the turntable. We manually center it. Once it's in place, again, with one pedal, the wheel will be locked in place. Once the wheel is locked in place on the turntable, it's now time to set up the leverless head. So we're going to swing the arm in. Uh, with this spring-loaded, we can control uh, spring-loaded shaft. We can control the vertical movement. We'll have to make sure the inserts are right against the edge of the wheel. With this handle, we will lock in place the vertical movement. With this switch, we can now lock the swing arm. So as you can see, the arm is not opening right now. This is what you should look for when positioning the head against the wheel. So we will lower the arm. This insert right here needs to be right around the edge of the wheel. Once we lock this, the head will actually take one mil out and one mil up in order to protect the edge of the wheel. But it needs to be pretty close in order to work properly. 
on some lower profile tire we will need the help of the BPT in order to make sure the finger goes in and reach the bead of the tire so you see in this case we can just manually create some space lower the leverless finger which will go into position at that point by just rotating the finger will catch the bead of the tire alright so now we are ready to demount the top bead of the tire remember that it can happen that this bead pops out of the drop center with the helper arm we can always fix that in no time we can make sure it's in the drop center all the way around when we start using the leverless system the TPMS if you have a TPMS valve I suggest you to place it right before the leverless head at this point we can hit the switch that will raise the bead so basically this does the job of your usual pry bar at this point we can start rotating first speed normally when the tire jumps on top we can hit the second speed Okay, in order to dismount the bottom bead of this tire, we can just raise the top bead above the finger, lower it with the switch, make sure it catches the bottom bead. At this point, it's also very important that at the opposite, you hold the tire into the drop center. This will make it much easier. Raise the finger and start rotating. We're going to proceed and mount a new tire. You would swing the arm in all the way against the wheel. Once we lock it again, it will have a safe distance from it. And you would place your tire right now how you would place it on any regular tire changer. In an angle on top of the tail of the demount head and underneath the mobile finger. Bottom bead is now mounted. We're going to do the same for the top one. So just making sure we are on top of the tail and underneath the finger. Our sensor ideal position would be here. And the BPT that I really like for this kind of wheel because it's a huge help. So instead of using a pry bar, potentially scratch the wheel. You can just use this foot that will keep the tire in place during the whole procedure. Once the tire is completely mounted, we can rotate the turntable with the valve stem close to our inflation gauge. There is a pedal on the side of the machine. Just remember it's important to unlock your wheel from the jaws before inflating. You don't want the jaws to get caught between the wheel and tire.